She was only the fisherman's daughter, but she lay on her back and said, Fill it. Welcome to part seven. Not entirely sure why I just did that. Uh, I'll probably cut it out of the video, so who cares? Anyway, uh, we're now on part seven of this Let's Play Struk tutorial. Struk. I haven't got anything after that, so just those two. Uh, and we have reloaded from the end of part five, because the last part we did, part six, was technology and we moved the capital. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but we'll come back to where we were at the end of part five, because I did say in the description of six that you could skip it. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. We have three counties. Uh, now, the first thing I want to do... We have our little independent realm there. Uh, it's quite interesting. Well, it's, <laughs> it's interesting in that all three are now referred to as the Duchy of Meath because I am the Duke of Meath. So I'm kind of thinking if I went county by county, that everything would end up as the Duchy of Meath. Of course, de jure-wise, it's different. So in other words, de facto, three counties currently make up the Duchy of Meath. De jure will only ever be the two. We have a claim we know there. On Osuri, uh, hit de jure, hit Judge Lenster. We can create. We have we have half the counties, but we don't have any Wonga. So we'll uh, be looking at that next. Of course, our Chancellor has uh, is still gone off to fabricate claims in there. So hopefully something will happen. In the meantime, though, I reckon what we should have a go is we've just conquered Kildare. And the bloke we beat has become our liege. However, I want this guy's title because it gives me more income and gives me a direct domain levy. And since we have space in our domain, we have only two out of maximum five, I think we should have a have a stab at uh, revoking the title off him and seeing what happens. So, uh, we can do that immediately, I think. What is interesting though is we do have this, we have a truce with him, so uh, I guess I can't declare war, but I guess I can revoke, so anyway, let's go, revoke title, revoking a title will lower his opinion obviously, and if you do not have a claim on the title or high enough crown authority it will cost you prestige. Now this is where, I find this a bit bizarre actually slightly, but we want to revoke for 50 prestige, he'll hate us minus 80 and the other vessels will hate us by minus 20 but from what I've found out really that only happens the minus 20 if he goes along with it and sometimes he will if he's got a really high opinion of it, of you like up in the 80s 90s hundreds sometimes you, his answer will just be yes and he'll say I'm not very happy but I'll do it in which case you'll take a minus 20 hit with every single one of your other vassals but at the moment our opinions are quite high so it's, I, I'm willing to uh, you know, I'm willing to take the risk. However, if he rebels, I don't think... And then we manage to beat him. We'll have to beat him in a fight. Uh, then we get to take the title off him with no minus 20 hit. Which, you know, you know, seems a bit bizarre to me. Why you get away... You know, if you revoke someone's title just because they decide to fight, why do your vassals... Are they not bothered anymore? They should be, because you've still attempted to revoke. But anyway... Uh, what do I know? I'm stupid. So, anyway, let's stop faffing about and just do it. And I'll probably find we did it all wrong. So, let's go County Kildare, send, unpause by smacking the space bar too hard, speed it up. And what he's probably going to do is he's going to go, You can stick that where the sun don't shine. May your years be shortened as well. We're not allowed to stick my titles without a fight. You are no longer my liege lord. So, as you see, it's become independent, so it's no longer part of our uh, domain. But we're now going to fight him. Unfortunately, when he's done that, if you look at Kildare, he doesn't have any troops because we annihilated them in the last war. And there's going to be no chance for him to come back. So it's all kind of pointless. So let's raise the levies. Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, let's raise the levies. Uh, just let's raise everything again. We don't really need to, but we're not. We can march them all now in. We don't have to group them up first because there is no. Uh, 
there is going to be no opposition to us because he'll raise he'll probably be able to raise one or two more troops shortly uh, but there we'll just annihilate him as we'll stick them together again over here you see the siege has now appeared and there you can keep the percentage uh, of it and as you can see uh, it works very well 743 as you in case you hadn't know I'm sure you do you need to have more people outside than they do inside for the siege to start to work um, and clearly we do also there's this as well actually which uh, has lit up we can order an assault which in other words means we're actually going to try and attack the thing instead of just waiting for the morale to fall but it we might take serious losses I did this once before and you it's right you do take serious losses which is which is correct you know we're besieging a great big bleeding castle so um, they can just sort of sit over the uh, sort of on the ramparts um, screaming at us and sticking their fingers up uh, that's just one of those defenders did something or other but anyway uh, that's all very fascinating so let's that let's that ugh, English English is apparently my first language right let's um, go and look at this guardian thing so one children one children that's not English oh dear this guy our court chaplain we sent him off to improve our opinion with this guy um, and to be honest he, every time he goes and talks to him when he was trying to convince himself I was good oh well he was good at that wasn't he he can basically talk to himself that's not an issue but get him to talk to anyone else and he's just a, an absolute fuckwit so harm indeed another 20 gone down oh, I'm just beginning to wonder whether we should assassinate him for stupidity you should be allowed to do that with no penalty anyway let's get back to what I was about to bang on about when I got diverted and was banging on about that so here we go one of the kids oh it's your half brother I'm not sure I give a crap about the half brother uh, this is because our who the hell is this Start that again, let's go to the family tree, it's a lot easier. Uh, ooh. What the hell's that? What the hell is that? Touch sheet of meat. What? What the hell is going on? Going? Oh, it's all it's all going Pete Tong at the moment. Why about that in a minute? Uh, your call to your father. Oh, my. My father! Ooh! It's a dot shoot of me. What the hell's going on? My dad had another son. Um. Right, okay. I think. I'm a bit worried about why that says. Dot shoot of me. How does that work? Right, sorry, I'm obviously a bit of a plonker, so, well, a lot of a plonker, maybe. Uh, I was a bit confused there, trying to work out who the hell that was, but that that is our half-brother, because basically our father, who had the county of Leinster, uh, has had another kid, who was this guy here, and he had him with a different wife. He had it with his courtier, dirty, dirty old man, although she's no looker, to be fair. Uh, she got gluttony. Hmm. She's quick. She doesn't look like she'd move quick. Unless, unless maybe there was some food knocking around. Anyway, he has him, and he's the one who's just turned. Oh no, so he's not. So he's the one who's just turned six. So do you want to appoint a guardian uh, of that child? We may as well appoint a guardian, but I'm not going to do it myself. This slightly freaked me out as to why he has that duchy of Meath thing going on there. Merchard. I have no idea why he has unless that's where he is. Oh he's at court in Dublin. Yeah, I don't know. Someone can tell me why, it's probably obvious. Anyway, he's got a claim on the county of Leinster because that was the county that he's that his dad owned. So let's just educate him uh with anyone. He's got decent his traits. So let's do 
Uh, oh, lunatic. <laughs> this character is stark raving mad. Uh, he's our mayor of Dublin. Marvellous. It's useful sometimes if you don't, if you're not too bothered. I'm not too bothered about what this guy's traits are. He's not going to inherit for anything. So it could be useful actually to give this guardianship to. Let's give it to this guy. And the only reason is when you do it, you get an up on your opinion. You can't keep. Give, I think you only get it once. You can't lob loads of guardians on. But you may as well let him do that. So he's got a guardian there. Someone tell me if I should have actually um, come up with. A better, a better idea for that. Anyway, our spy master died. Unfortunately, the mayor of Wexford. Uh, oh, he's a good one. And also, if we do this, we should get a bonus with him because we're about to make him. Uh, there you go. Yeah, he's, we've given him what 15 plus 15 because he's a spy master. So that's a bit of a winner. Unfortunately we can't assign the job at the moment because he's leading troops, but that's alright, the troops won't be there forever. So we'll it was paused while we did that. Um, this guy we don't care. I don't care. Uh, so anyway, where are we at the moment? So we had the Guardian. Uh, we've getting a warning about the vassals being raised too long, but this war won't take too long, I don't think. Um, let's have a quick butcher's hook again. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, we were talking about the fact that if you attempt, you can attempt to assault it, uh, and it does get very, very uh, pricey when you do that in terms of troops. So to be honest, it's best to just wait it out. And uh, you know, as we said before, you can see the, the impacts on the morale of there, uh, and that all depends on the fort level and how much how outnumbered you are, plus the technology level. One point one is probably saying that the county of Kildare has got siege military. Um, Kildare has got so there are old cobblers. I don't know why it thinks it's got 1.1 because um, I don't think it's got anything Siege Defence gets you 10% with military fortification but Kildare doesn't have any military fortification so why they get a bonus God only knows uh, but anyway this siege here is almost done he says it is done the score is 31% who's this bloke? ah he's raised some troops why has he raised troops? Why have you raised troops, mate? Where are you off to? You're going to Leinster. I hope you're not going to do anything stupid, Leinster. Uh, anyway, we have our bloke. Oh, now where is he heading off to? He's heading off to Dublin. Sorry, I'm just going <laughs> to I'm just going to follow where he's going. Uh, he could be heading off up here, actually. Maybe, maybe there seems to be something going on. Uh, oh no, that's the rebels. So maybe not. Uh, although, sorry, let's see if he's got any allies. The King of England. Is his ally, so maybe he's been asked to go and do something with the King of England. Anyway, off he goes. That's a mistake taking your troops away, matey boy. Because I'm gonna take that soon. Right. So now this guy here has said, "All right, I'll surrender." Uh, he was a plonker really for rebelling because uh, he didn't have any levies because I'd already just beaten him. So, anyway, he loses 200 prestige, I gain 50 prestige. Oh, fuck off, my. This is one of these, he tried to get some extra ties and it all went a bit pear-shaped. We might have a revolt on our hands in Dublin. Let's just have a quick look. Dublin revolt risk is about to go up. Uh, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll take our marshal and get him to suppress revolts in Dublin. Hopefully that will go back. In the meantime, we've accepted uh, our geezer here and we've imprisoned him, uh, which means he's still the Earl of Kildare. But now we are going to do uh, two things, right? Now, here's a bit of interest if you're interested. So, what do you do? If you revoke the title, have a look at this, County of Kildare, you'll see, since he's a traitor, our vessels will now not object. So beforehand, there was a risk 
that it would be minus 20. Uh, let's worry about that in a minute. There was a, a risk beforehand that all our vassals would, would hate us to the tune of minus 20. But because he revolted instead of agreeing to hand it over, we don't get that. And since he has revolted and we've now beaten him, we can now take this title off him uh, for free with no minus 20 hit. Now, there is an important thing here, which sometimes you might um, go up against a traitor, you've jailed him and he's got more than one title. You know, say he owns a couple of counties. You only get a free revocation of one of them, right? So if you say he had the county killed there and also he had breath in and we've stuck him in prison, he rebelled, we only get to take one off. So we could take killed there off him, then we could come back and say revoke breath in and it would give you the old you're gonna take a minus twenty hit, alright? So, in other words, if he's holding quite a few titles you're not going to be able to nick all of them off him. You can just get one title off him for free as he's a traitor. And for free, I just mean you don't take a minus 20 hit. However, there is a way around that, which is this. If you banish him... Now, if you banish him, all of his titles are confiscated, right? And But when you do that, and you get some gold off him as well, because you've basically told him, go away. Get out of Ireland, or get out of... Well, Ireland doesn't exist at the moment, but get out of uh, our territory. However, this is seen as being quite harsh, so you will get a minus 20 hit for your vassals, even though he rebelled. But, all of his titles would be confiscated. So, in other words, if he's got two... Say he's got th one title, then you definitely don't want to banish him, because although you will get a bit of gold, which could be useful, you'll get a minus 20 hit when you could just revoke for free. However, say he's got three titles and you want them all, well, if you go down the revoke title, the first one will be free, but the other two will cost you 20 each. That's minus 40 opinion. So in that case, you should banish him, in which case you get a minus 20 instead of a minus 40, and you get all his titles, and you get, as a Brucey bonus, some gold. So we could... Uh, either banish him now, if we were willing to take the minus 20, I'm wondering whether it might be worth anyway, despite everything I've just banged on about, whether we could banish him because we get 66 gold, uh, which means we could claim Ossessory and start um, thinking about attacking. But no, let's go with our original plan. Let's just go with that, which is I'm going to take it off him. And Bob Girard is living lover. We now own Kildare outright, which means we now have four titles, three counties, and the Duchy of Meath. And just to check, our vassals haven't got you revoke the title, where's your minus 20? Again, I don't really agree with that. I think that's a bit rubbish, because, um, you know... They're saying that if you revoke a title, your vassals, all of your vassals will hate you by minus 20. And that makes sense, because they're worried that you're going to do it to them. However, if you then revoke a title and he rebels, it's it's like they're no longer worried about you. It's almost like you can do it. I, I think that's a bit crap. So, uh, anyway, assuming uh, he had given the title up without a fight, then all of these guys here would have an, a minus 20 on it. And what will happen is they will hold that minus 20 for the rest of their lives while you rule. While you rule. While you rule. So, uh, but what was interesting is if they die, when they get succeeded, so when the mayor of Dublin dies and this bloke comes as his heir, well, he won't have a minus 20 opinion of you because he wasn't one of your vassals when you did the revocation. So, just a bit of info, if you do incur this minus 20 uh, revoke penalty from all your vassals, it will only stay with you while you're the king and while that particular vassal lives. Uh, and of course, if it's really screwing up your opinion, you could attempt to, to try and replace all the vassals, uh, you know, assassinating, all that sort of rubbish. But anyway, for the moment, we have uh, taken three titles now. And whilst that hadn't changed before, we now own them directly you can see all up there which means all of that income and those levies once they build up again are going to come back to us uh, we'll just disband them 
because it costs us money to do it. Um, and therefore, you, and you can see that they were sent straight back. And then we'll do with this one at the moment, which is our dear nephew. He's clearly upset because I did, I did promise to get him married. So this has come up with. Um, okay, I've re remember before I was getting freaked out about what that meant. That just means obviously where they are. So she is in the Duchy of Meath. She's in my. Maybe she's in my court. Is she in my court? What's her name? Alice de Trim. Alice de Trim. Cool name. Oh, there, yeah, okay, so that's all that means. Uh, whereas he's over in Dublin. Blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that freaked me out slightly before. So we've promised for him to get married. Now, he is our... Uh, I'm terrible at this sort of stuff. Child, child, child. If he's our nephew, how does that work? He is... Uh... <laughs> so that's my brother's son brother's son so am I going to care about really who he marries apart from the fact that it would be nice if I married someone with a claim uh, no let's try and marry yeah I'll box. we'll let him have that one but we're going to look, start looking at alliances next so um, we need to start marrying people off with an alliance now this Suri Suri guy here. Uh, he, these these are where his troops are going. He is defending against Duke Summit of Somerset in a war to depose King Edmond of England. And the question is why oh why is he doing that? And that's because his ally his ally his ally is King Edmund of uh, of. Uh, Biscuit of, of England. <laughs> uh, they seem to be malfunctioning. Now, for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why. So, as you can see, sorry, King Edmund has called old uh, Osri Bloke over, so he's sending his five troops, which is, I'm sure is a, a major, major uh, issue and bonus. Um, I'm not quite sure what I was going to look at is when we come to fight this guy, Osri. Now he is obviously an ally therefore of... oh he can do it now, good. He's an ally of the King of England. And that's green, which means he can call troops, which probably means that that war they were just in has just ended. So we have to be careful now, when we press our... when we create the Duchy of Leinster and press our claim, old uh, silly bollocks here can call him in, the King of England, as an ally. And uh, you don't really need telling that the King of England at the moment uh, is covering quite a lot of stuff and he would annihilate us. So, the interesting thing is therefore how do we go about doing this in case uh, we decide to go for us? Because you see, the, the, we're, we're going to be financially able to get this soon and the way what you want to care about is you want to care about the opinion of the relative people and this here is that 15 okay this guy's called Domnall that 15 is actually it's badly laid out is the king of England's opinion of us All right which is basically uh, sorry no yes 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 that 15 is the king of England's opinion of us and you can see what makes it up there it's state diplomacy prestige so it's basically nothing right um, however if we go back if you look that 15 if you look at the King of England's opinion there of Domnall his ally it's higher 35 and it's high actually simply because Domnall has honored an alliance which we've just seen he just gave him some troops so if we declare war on Ossori we will, uh, having got the duchy, the likelihood, likelihood is he'll ask the King of England to come in. And since the King of England, his opinion of him is 35 and it's only of us 15, there's a good chance, especially since it's near, because that also does come into it, there's a good chance the King of England will send a few thousand troops over, which means we'll be mincemeat. So we need... There's, t there's two ways about this, really. One is don't go to war with them yet and the other way is to try and get the King of England's opinion up of us above 35 
And how would you do that, if you were that way inclined, is you would do this. You'd send the Chancellor over to improve diplomatic relations with the King of England. So you'd go and find out, I guess, where he was. Um, he's in Westminster, Middlesex there, so you you just go there. I think, anyway. Uh, in fact, I don't think, I know. But the only problem is it's a bit hit or miss, because he might not actually, he might actually improve your opinions with these guys instead. Uh, but our daughter-in-law has just died, which is interesting, because they were trying to kill her. Uh, oh, he's heartbroken. So anyway, um, we have to decide what we want to do, and this is why this ga what I love about this game, because we now have choices. We really want our chance to stay there to fabricate claims, but uh, we also need to get the uh, king, the uh, opinion of the king of England, up a bit. Uh, oh, there's some more Wonga. Therefore. I am probably going to call a close to this video here. We haven't done much, of course. We've just banged on a lot. I apologise. Uh, but I, I'm thinking in the next one, if we continue down this route, we might possibly try and now go through this whole thing of inviting someone in with one of these claims. Uh, and that way we can maybe try and concentrate on there and hope somehow, let's have a look at the basis of this alliance with England, is Domhnall's son, Murdoch's brother-in-law. Domhnall's son, Murdoch, so he's married the sister, I guess. Oh, fuck all. Is that his son? Oh, autosave. Go away. Domhnall's son. Right, that guy has married the Princess of England. Now, the one thing I don't quite know is how... I th the, they haven't had any kids, so if he dies, or she dies, uh, that alliance will be broken, I think. I wonder if we could assassinate one of them. Because this is where it all gets very fascinating. 2362. Probably not wise, is it? I'm half tempted to give it a go, just for the crack of it, really. But um, What I was looking at was whether this alliance will break some point. Now I'm I'm just wondering what happens with the Alliance and this is something I'm gonna have to look at. What happens to the Alliance if they have kids? Because if they have kids it'll be of his dynasty but there'll be a mixture and I kind of wonder if the the Alliance continues. So I'll have a look into that and we'll continue on the next one. So that's kinda of where we are. We haven't actually done anything other than we've got Kildare for ourselves, which is therefore up to our monthly balance the two point nine two because we're now getting a lot more. We're getting three of cash. So next time we will look at this getting another wife for our heir, which is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, and then we'll start looking at trying to get some claims and also some alliances and also whether we want to try and get the King of England to love us more than he loves this geezer here. So I'm going to pause again. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to sing. Uh, in fact, I promise I won't sing in any in, in other ones. So, uh, come and visit again if you want it. If not, uh, thanks very much. Oh, and by the way, for those people who have made comments on the on my previous videos, they've all been really kind, and I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I don't want to get into replying to every single one, but if I haven't replied, it doesn't mean I've I've not taken note and uh, I haven't read read it. I have done, and it's uh, much appreciated because I've never done YouTube vids before. So uh, thank you, one and all, uh, who's done that, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again for the next following instalment. See you later.